the year 2000. And based on work that I published during that period, as well as a few years before that, uh, I came up with the idea that the amyloid, instead of being the cause of the disease, is actually a response to the disease. And there are two, the common views is, one is that the amyloid is the cause of the disease, and it's everything. And the other version is, well, it's ir irrelevant. I take a third view. It's really important. In fact, probably more important than any of them, either version does contents but being important and being and critical is not equivalent to being causative and that is that uh, my view is that the amyloid is playing a role in the uh, antioxidant response things i study metabolism and antioxidant response dealing with autophagy and metal turnover and uh, how cells respond to that and it's a necessary piece but it isn't the thing that starts it. So removing the amyloid may make things worse, not better. That is what we um, said beginning in the year 2000. Um, initially saying, gee, the only way it's really going to be tested is to remove amyloid. Well, the amyloid has been removed from patients now, especially well by the biogen studies. And the patients didn't improve. If it was the driver of disease, some of the patients should have improved, at least during some phase of the disease. And they didn't. Instead, everybody makes up excuses for it's too early, it's too late. We've hit the wrong form. So why, why did the amyloid idea become so prevalent? Number one was the genetics. So my argument in the earlier debate is important because he said, oh, this genetics proves it's causative. It doesn't prove causation, it proves association. The other piece is it's always there by the definition of the disease. So one of the analogies, and I've written probably close to 100 different articles about why amyloid is not as important, We're using lots of different analogies, using Copernicus, about the, you know, being the center of the universe thing or, or other types of approaches. But one that I think is easy to understand is uh, arson versus fireman. That you have to really understand the context of each thing that's acting. If the amyloid is acting as a protective response, it'll always be there, just like a fireman is always around fires. You know, in a well-managed city, when there's a fire, Firemen are there. If you didn't understand the context of how fires were started and stopped, you would think the firemen was destroying things. What do they do? They're pouring water on things. They're poking things. It's, they're, just, they're causing massive destruction. And when you arrive, when the fireman's there, the arsonist is long gone. So therefore, you're missing what's really causing the problem. And that's the contention I make. Uh, some other people have actually used the analogy, which I think very similar. It was made after ours, uh, that um, uh, airbags cause deaths. Because if you look at cars that have airbags deployed, people very often die. It doesn't look the fact that the airbags <laughs> reduced how many people would have died had they not deployed. So you could say the airbags cause the accident, the airbags cause deaths, lots of different things. But I think that this analogy with the fire is a, is a good one. The other part that people made, other people made, uh, contended, they say, well, everything's already happened when you do the treatment. Yeah, I think things have initiated, but the people with the biogen study, some of the people were studied were pre, were during mild cognitive impairment or even slightly earlier. Second part, the, and the, the idea that the neurons are all lost, that's not true. Neuron, people that have Alzheimer's disease have brain shrinkage and they lose neurons, but the amount they lose is quite variable and it's not related to how much cognition change there is. Why didn't anybody respond? That's never answered because there are people that if you were to look at the brains of people that had Alzheimer's and were normal, 
uh, you might not see that much difference if you look to age individuals. There are a lot of brain abnormalities that develop as people age, and Alzheimer's is just one of them. Why didn't anybody respond? So I don't think that piece can be answered. 